just seems like we're at the precipice of uh, everything breaking down. We have a Fed pal who thinks he's in control of everything, and he's in control of everything until a large sovereign like China releases trillions of dollars or yuan into the marketplace. You got Europe has to do something. I mean, this debt deal they just announced, I was reading through, it's so complicated. It's, it's a promise to do nothing. Uh, I just think we're going to see more flooding of heroin all across the financial industry. I call it heroin because it's the best analogy. You know, junkies either rehab or they die. And this mechanism of being able to print money, it's just too easy. If I was in control, I would print money. I would print and I would print and I would print and I would print until the patient is either dead and someone else has to take care of them. I mean, I think people are grossly underestimating how long this can go on. And that's true of the Bitcoin community. They, they seem like, you know, hey, this is all gonna end tomorrow. But I think it's very difficult to determine how long a Fed can print and, and quite frankly, I think most of the population is happy when they print. So it it's, solves voting, it solves unrest. And I think quite frankly, tightening to 500% from zero in six months, that was insanity. Zero was insanity. It's just very unstable. It's very difficult to make economic decisions on large blocks of investment strategy for a family that are based on no fundamentals whatsoever. I mean, we had a war, we were talking yesterday when 9-11 happened, the stock market went down, what, 27% in 10 days. In Israel, when the Israeli thing went off, you know, a month or so ago, the stock market went up 2%. Now explain that to me. For me, it's really fundamentally unexplainable. So it seems to me like someone's pulling the, the strings behind the curtain. And that's really hard for me to make investment strategy uh, behind. So that's that really is what leads me to Bitcoin because it, it takes me to a safe haven place. But I think we, we, we're probably going to be at war this year. And I'm not even sure we're going to have an election. It's, uh, to me, this is a really, really important period in time. We have an election in November. Hopefully, everybody's talking about whether we're going to have a fair election. Hell, I'm, I'm just wor worried about having an election. There's chaos and mayhem going on all over the world. I, I, I don't know how a stock market goes up when, you know, an event bigger than 9-11 happened. I, I don't get it. it. Seems unstable, sounds unstable, feels unstable. You speak to people that are living in New York like yourself, and I don't hear a lot of happy people living there paying inordinate taxation. And you, you're, all your billionaires are moving out of town, so your taxation by default is going to go up if you stay there just as it is in California and just as we said it would go up in California for the past 30 years we've been saying this that California would have a major major problem uh, and it's happening so you have 22 million people that have been displaced out of the Ukraine they are women children male and female and I don't know how Europe handles 22 million people okay they're already broke if the euro breaks apart and the eurozone breaks apart, which I believe that the entire eurozone construct was like paper mache, the UK were made fun of for exiting the EU. And I, I actually maintain that they never joined the EU because they retain their right to print those $50 note, 50 pound notes. So I, I don't think that the, the United Kingdom was ever a part of the EU. They don't produce anything. They have no energy resources. They have no agriculture. I'm not making fun of them. It's just a fact, okay? Europe doesn't produce anything. So if you got 22 million girls, boys, and children flooding into Europe, who's going to take care of them in the hospitals, the housing, food, the water? That's after the entire Euro constructs just kind of failed. You slammed 11 countries together, 11, 11 cultures, and you're expecting them all to be held together by some notes that are printed with the name Euro on them. So massive debt. I don't know how you work yourself out of this unless you just flood the whole market and we go, this is my prediction. In Europe, they will place multiple trillion dollar bonds under the guise of clean energy and they will nuclearize the entire landscape of Europe. That will then literally, there will be very little imports of fossil fuel into Europe, which will flood the rest of the market, the rest of the entire world. I don't think we're ever gonna see $100 oil.
mulligan. If this plays out correctly, which would be that the governments to hide the, the abuse of how they've treated, you know, taxation, they will launch a monster, monster bond, call it the nuclear green era. And uh, man, that is going to have severe consequences on the marketplace. So I could see a massive recession. I could see a depression. But before any of that, I think it's just easier to claim war, a big bad boogeyman, um, than it is to talk about the incompetency of the politicians. I hate to be so negative, but I think that's where we're at. And let's think about this as an invention, right? As a 21st century invention that happened just to show up at the right time, the right place to solve some problems that we've never, at least in America's history of 180 years or whatever it is, we haven't been able to deal with some of these issues. So um, we have a 15 year chart. I removed the first eight years and I have a you know seven year chart that looks very, very impressive. A five year chart on Bitcoin is about 600% increase, greatest performing asset in that period of time only nearly followed closely by Tesla. So it's not like we're back into 2008, 2013, when Bitcoin was really, really nascent and young. We're 20, the 21st century, 2023, we've got eight years behind us of decent volume. We have an ETF being launched here. I maintain that in the next two weeks, this will be looked upon as one of the greatest investment opportunities that allowed you and I and your children, your aunt, your sister, wherever they live in the world to front run institutional funding into an asset class that has not been available to them, has not been understood by them, has been poo-pooed and naysayed by them. It's the only time in history I know that you and I and my mom could front run Goldman Sachs, Fidelity, BlackRock, and that ends in two or three weeks. Once this ETF is launched, it's over, okay? The window for you front running the large banks is done. The invention itself is the only finite product I know of other than you and me. You and I are the only true finite, unique, peculiar personalities. The problem with you and I is we die. There's problems with us. You know, people can shoot us. I get involved with the wrong woman. I go crazy, right? So that's a problem with my uniqueness. Bitcoin doesn't have that. Bitcoin has all the, the similar that you can't produce more, more Bitcoin no matter what the price is. And that's what I love about the gold, silver, and crude oil players. And in fact, real estate players. I have been surprised that more real estate, gold, and silver players haven't really gotten this very, very quickly. But if you think about being able to buy the finest, you know, what do they say about real estate? Location, 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 right? Well, that means something. That means, you know, that has better value than other real estate. Well, there's only one Bitcoin. There's, you, you unlike real estate or crude oil, which if we take crude oil to $120, you're going to produce a lot of crude oil that wasn't available yesterday, right? You will do a lot of things to get that crude oil out of the ground at $120. With Bitcoin, that is not achievable, okay? You cannot accelerate the production of the last 2 million into the marketplace. So you can't bring new supply to the market. You can only unlock the supply that's being held in my wallet right now, uh, which I've been collecting over the last four years, and I still don't think I have enough. But I think there's going to come a time when of the 19 million units that have been issued, there's a lot of wealthy people. I, I think 85% of the super wealth on this planet hasn't invested a penny into Bitcoin. Not a penny. They already have allocations to gold, crude oil, NVIDIA, you know, you can go buy the top seven companies. I think these people have massive allocations to bonds, to real estate. My brother has massive real estate positions. Cool. You're not going to have any Bitcoin. You're going to have real estate and that's okay, right? They're different investment strategies. Keep in mind, I do have gold. I do own silver. Uh, I like silver better than gold, quite frankly. I have ammo. I have guns. I have water. I have food. I live on the Gulf so I can fish if I need to. My family, I have done my job as an alpha male to protect my family. Now my job is, can I protect their future, their ability to buy and to survive in an economy that's pretty weird? I don't know if you've ever tried to carry $2 million worth of gold around, but it's it's uh, complex. It's very heavy. In, in fact, uh, I have $700,000 worth of silver in a vault over there, and it literally takes up the entire vault. Okay, but it's only 700 grand. I couldn't possibly carry all that silver with me. I can't even get on 
on a plane with anywhere near that much silver. So the transportability of silver, I mean, I've done some new, some business with Kitco before. I bought all my silver and gold from Kitco, but sending it back it is, you know, it's problematic. So that for me is a liquidity problem. It's not that gold is not liquid. It's me getting it to the point where it can be liquid. Look, if I think a cyber attack's coming along tomorrow, this is what I want to do. I want to be in cash. I want to be in gold and silver and have a tremendous amount of uh, weapons around me with friends, like a village. Um, so I keep telling everybody, hey, y'all come on down to St. Pete, man. If you're, if you're a God-fearing person and you're good, uh, come on down to St. Pete because uh, I need a bigger neighborhood of great people. So th then we're good on food and, and protect our environment. But you can't really live that way, can we? We can't right. live like, okay, we're going to have a cyber attack tomorrow morning. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. It would be a way we would not have an election. Enough. That right. that would absolutely be a way, and that's why I bring up the pipelines because we should be asking ourselves who blew those pipelines up. Okay, who blew the dam up that we don't even talk about anymore? Who escalated that event in Israel that just happened to come along at the very tail end of the Ukraine thing? So I think there's somebody stirring this stuff up, and I can't live that way and worry about it. I have to believe that you know someone is going to sane minds are finally going to come about, but you cannot keep pushing morphine and heroin into this body, free capital, just print, print, print. And at some point we don't have some reckoning, right? Like, you know, real estate goes up because there's a, a, a production of US dollars. Most of the value in real estate going up over time is because dollars continue to be printed, period. That's the only reason real estate's doubled. And, and for me, that's the inverse with Bitcoin. I can literally go, okay, I have a play here with Bitcoin that allows me to, if I'm wrong, then the US dollar and the market's wonderful. NVIDIA's at $8 million a share. Google's a $8 trillion company. And my Bitcoin's worth nothing. Okay, that, that's my worst case. My best case is, uh-oh, uh, I got it right. We're going through a massive change from analog to digital in everything, both in mental and in physical. And Bitcoin is, seems to me to be better suited to serve that marketplace because I think you and I are going to soon, we will own robots and those robots will actually trade currency with each other. Let's say we have both have assistants. Those robots are gonna trade micro dollars, micro some value between each other for, okay, setting up an, a, a lunch, getting you a plane ticket down here, whatever we're doing, why are we doing that? It would be much better for a robot to do it and for you and I to pay that robot so that we're able to use the future rental economy. See, I really believe we should be in a rental lease pay for it as you use it, because if you pay for something as you use it, I think it helps better control how you consume it and how you waste it. And I think there's a lot of waste going on, uh, which is probably a whole conversation, but I think we're probably 30% underpriced on all energy in the United States and Canada, 30% at least 30% underpriced on the real value of electricity and energy. Otherwise, you would turn your laptop off at night. No one turns anything off in the Western countries. Not No one. That tells me it's not energy is not priced correctly. That tells me there's too much of energy. I'll be staggered if something substantial, what most people would refer to as a black swan, I will be massively surprised. In fact, I would make a fifty to $100,000 bet that sometime between now and August, there is some event that we like, wow, a COVID-19, 9-11 type event. I can't tell you what that's gonna look like. Mm -hmm. Bigger than, bigger than Ukraine, bigger than Israel, current, uh, bigger than all the people that are protesting that nobody wants to talk about across major cities all over the world. Like that's happening right now. Nobody wants to talk about it, but it's happening, right? I think we're, we're already at civil. I mean, this is going to really freak people out, but I think we're at civil war in the United States. When, when, when the red politicians and the blue politicians, whatever that means, uh, can't agree on what pencil to use. We're pretty much at war. We just don't have muskets pointed at each other yet. You can't say that we have a lot of agreement 
on anything. And if you've ever been in a relationship, just a simple relationship, if you can't agree on basic principles, you're at war every day. And, and so when does it escalate? I, I, like it usually escalates when someone wants to hold their position in space, right? Mm -hmm. They want to hold their position. They want to hold their old world. Uh, I don't like change any more than you do um, or anyone else, but I'm pretty sure if I'm a monopoly or a cartel and I'm on the inner club and there are inner clubs, I, it took me 40 years for somebody to confirm there are clubs that you and I will never be invited to ever. It's just not, you know, our DNA, our blood bloodline, just not going to make the cut. Most of those people, if I was there, I would not want to lose that position either. I mean, I don't want to lose my little comfortable position here in St. Pete. I don't want to go to war, but I, I would be shocked, absolutely shocked if something massively significant doesn't happen in the next six months. Sadly, 